the Pacific Ocean is the largest body of water on the planet. It's so big, in fact, that if you pick this point off the coast of Chile and then go directly opposite, you end up still inside the Pacific Ocean. It's huge. From this angle, it really does look like our planet is nothing but water, just the ocean. But the ocean isn't only water. It's a solution made out of water, minerals, and salts. In this video, we're going to explore what dissolves in water and why, with six hands-on activities. Salt crystals, halocline eggs, eggshell geodes, borax snowflakes, rock candy, and bath bombs. Most of the salt in the ocean is sodium chloride, a compound made of one sodium and one chlorine atom. I have one too many electrons. I just need one more electron. Do you want this? Yes! Now we're ions! Positive and negative charges attract each other, and so the sodium and chlorine form an ionic bond. Water also has a slight positive and negative charge. You might remember this from the previous Science Mom videos. This is called polarity. Because water is polar, it's very attracted to the ions in the salt. So when a salt particle goes into water, the ionic bond between sodium and chlorine is broken, and the water molecules surround the ions. This is how salt dissolves. But how much salt can water hold? How much salt do you think there is in, say, one cup of seawater? This water is from the Pacific Ocean, and it's very salty. Yeah, yeah, can't drink it. If you drink it, you actually get more dehydrated and thirstier because the salt content is so high. But just how much salt is inside this cup? Well, if we leave it out for several weeks and let it evaporate, we'll find out. Pause the video, make a quick prediction. It's been a couple weeks now, the water evaporated, but the salt stayed behind. And if I scrape this down so we can see exactly how much is in here, there's really just a spoonful of salt inside that cup of water to make it salty. You can make your own salt solution at home by adding three tablespoons of salt to one cup of boiling water. Three tablespoons is close to being saturated. That's about the most salt you can get to go into solution and dissolve. This is a more concentrated solution than salt water from the ocean, and it will begin growing crystals within a day or two. The crystals will always have a squarish shape to them, because the sodium chloride molecules arrange themselves into a very organized pattern, and that pattern is reflected in the larger crystals. By changing how quickly the water cools and evaporates, you can also change how the crystals grow, making them larger or smaller. The Great Salt Lake has more than twice as much salt as the ocean, which makes it very easy to float. The salinity is so high that I can easily lift my feet, hands, and head out of the water. But if I try to do this in a swimming pool, it's impossible. I can keep my face and feet above the water, or my hands in my face, but not all of them. Every time I try it, I sink. Keeping hands, feet, and head out of the water feels like an impossible challenge. But in the Great Salt Lake, it's easy as can be. The reason my swimming experiences were so different is because the density of salt water and fresh water are very different. In fact, the density of salt water and fresh water are so different that we can layer fresh water on top of salt water and they won't mix. This is called a halocline or a salt slope. The setup for this is a little bit tricky because you can't have the water mix too much. So if you take a spoon, Put the spoon right next to the edge there, and then pour slowly onto the spoon. That usually works. If I place an egg in fresh water, it should sink. It's more dense than the water. But the salt changes the density of water. An egg in salt water floats. And this egg should hover right around the middle because it's floating on a layer of salt water which is layered underneath a layer of fresh water. And now a half hour later you can see that the eggs are still in their positions with the one in fresh water being at the bottom, the one with the halocline layer of salt water and fresh water being in the middle, and the salt water one being on top which is pretty cool. This layer is impressively stable and in the ocean there are actually some underwater super salty lakes that 
maintain that barrier all the time. You can grow beautiful eggshell geodes by dissolving alum crystals in boiling water. Please note, aluminum sulfate and potassium aluminum sulfate are both called alum. The potassium aluminum sulfate will grow beautiful crystals. Aluminum sulfate, on the other hand, will not. So you want to make sure that you have the right ingredient. If your alum has granules that resemble salt and look like very tiny blocks, then you're good. If it's powdery and looks more like flour, then this is not the alum you're looking for. It will not give you any crystals. Make your solution and then add food dye and place it carefully into two heat-proof jars or cups. Then add your eggshells. Depending on the temperature of the water and the texture of the shell, you can get very different looking results. This one is a surprise, look at that. We got some nice crystal formation around almost the entire outside um, and some on the inside too. So that's the real fun to take out of the jar because you never quite know what you're going to see until you take it out. And don't throw out the crystals that form on the bottom of the jar. Those can be scraped out and then boiled and reused to grow new eggshell geodes. The reason we're able to get such good crystal growth with this investigation and the next one is because hot water can hold more solute than cold water. Look at us! We can hold so much stuff! When the water cools down, the molecules slow down and they aren't able to hold as much. Uh, I can't hold on to the solute. Me neither. And when the alum falls out of solution or precipitates, it forms into an organized structure just like the salt did in our first activity. You can grow crystals with borax too. Dissolve one cup of borax into four cups water and suspend a piece of pipe cleaner in the solution. These are also very fast crystals and will be ready within 12 to 24 hours. If you want to keep your crystal creation, then paint it with clear nail polish after it dries. Otherwise, any water that comes into contact with it will cause the crystal to begin to dissolve. So far, everything that we've been dissolving has had either a metal or a metalloid inside it. The salt had sodium, the borax had sodium and boron, and the alum had potassium and aluminum. But now we're going to go to sugar, which is made entirely of nonmetals. Sugar has carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, and that's it. Just those three things. And when we dissolve sugar in water, we're not going to get a chemical reaction. There's going to be no changing of the bonds in the sugar. The chemical bonds are going to stay the same. But the water molecules are going to surround the sugar, supporting it in solution. Because sugar has hydroxyl groups, several areas where that oxygen is quite electronegative, just like in water. You remind me of me, so I like you. And so sugar and water get along really well together. It goes into solution beautifully. With each activity so far, we want to make a saturated solution fitting as much into the water as we could. And here's how much salt, alum, and borax we were able to fit into one cup of water. Three tablespoons, a half cup, and a quarter cup. So what's your guess with sugar? How much sugar do you think we can fit into one cup of water? Pause the video, make a quick prediction. The answer is four cups. If you don't believe me, just watch. A sugar solution this concentrated will crystallize very quickly. So if you want to make rock candy, I recommend a slightly less concentrated solution. For recipes and more information about rock candy, check out the link to my website below. Bath bombs are wonderful. They smell great and they're super fun to watch dissolve. And they're a wonderful example of how important water is for facilitating chemical reactions. We can't react without you. 
This is citric acid, and this is baking soda. If I mix them together dry, nothing happens. Neither of them react. If I put them in water, not much happens. They just dissolve into the water very nicely and quietly. But now that they are hydrated, something exciting happens when I mix them. Bubbles. The baking soda and citric acid react, producing carbon dioxide gas. To make bath bombs, you want to mix your dry ingredients and then your wet ingredients. Then slowly and carefully mix your wet ingredients into your dry ingredients. If you don't hydrate the cornstarch and the baking soda a little bit, then they wouldn't hold together to make the bath bomb. But if you add too much water too quickly, you'll cause the citric acid and the baking soda to react. So go slowly. By the time you're done, the mixture should look almost sandy. Now pack them into the mold. You can put little foam capsules in as a surprise if you want, and then let them sit for at least 24 hours to get firm. Now the bath bomb is ready. We can put it in water and enjoy watching a gentle chemical reaction. I was worried about this video getting too long, and so I know I went through those six activities really quickly. But if you click on the link in the description, at my blog I have very detailed instructions for each of the activities, and as always, on my website you can also download a piece of paper that folds into a little miniature pocket-sized book. And it has instructions for all of the activities that we just did and some little tips and tricks for having the science experiments work out right. So, our book recommendation for this video is Rosie Revere's Big Project Book for Bold Engineers by Andrea Beattie and David Roberts. If you have not seen Andrea Beattie's books yet, you have got to check them out. They are all fantastic. I love them all. But this one is my very favorite. That's it. Work hard, grow smart, and I'll see you next time. All right, let's try our rock candy and see what it tastes like. Sweet! Naturally sweet. Well, Want me to eat it? Yes, you might, you might, you might. Well, that was successful. It's been two weeks and the egg is still on the halocline. Amazing. I think the halocline's gonna last longer than the eggs.